Hi guys, I'm Darren, and this video is a quick follow-up to my last video on the auto climb mode for cruise in iNav. So in that video, there are a couple of things that I could have made more clear. Uh, firstly, I named the video for iNav, but if you're using the transmitter version, this could be used for any flight controller firmware out there, sort of vector, you plane, you know, whatever you prefer using, it will work. You just need to make sure that the flight mode selected is that cruise mode. That is the most important part. The iNav only version was really just for the programming side of things. So I just wanted to make that clear. And speaking about the iNav versus transmitter versions, there's one other thing that you may have noticed. I did actually put it in the description for the video, but some people don't read descriptions. So I thought I'd cover it in this as well. And that is you will see a difference in the amount of movement based on the transmitter version versus the iNav only version. When we're using the iNav version, we're taking our direct slider RC input and adding 50% of that to the elevator. Whereas when we're on the transmitter, we're adding the 50%, for example, to the elevator signal itself. So when iNav receives that, it adds the RC Expo that you've got set to that elevator. So that's why the amount of movement is different. You have more movement for 50% in the pure iNav version than you do in the transmitter version. But like I did say in the video, you just need to tweak the percentages to get that optimum climb rate. So when you've got it full up, your climb rate is the most that you would ever want it. While again, we're on the climb rate, in the video, there was an example of EFOS versus OpenTX. And we could see on EFOS, we could actually have different endpoints for the weights. Uh, so we can have a climb rate at say 50% and a descent rate at 25%. Now, I did sort of think about this, but Charles pulled me up on it. And he mentioned that we could actually set a curve to do this in the transmitter. So we can have a lower descent rate than a climb rate, which you know, is a brilliant idea. So what I'm gonna do first is show you how to do that. This auto climb model is basically exactly the same as what we had before. We have our left slider on as the source. We have our switch for the cruise mode, which is something that I'll be going on to a little bit later in this video, because that is something that is pretty essential to this. And I will be sort of going into that in more detail. But for now, we, we, you know, this is basically what I had set up on the original video. So now we're gonna set this so that our slider will have more climb available than descent. So to make this easier to reverse, we're gonna actually change this to use a custom input. But first, what we're gonna do is create a curve. Now, what we're gonna do, we'll just call this climb or CLM. We change it to a three point curve and we're gonna add 50 and minus 100. Now this is actually backwards. Our 50 is our descent and our minus 100 is our climb. So when it comes time to uh, fine tuning the descent rate or the maximum descent rate, it's this 50 here that we'll need to edit. But we'll remember that for later on. So now we'll go to inputs. So I'm gonna create it on input 25 and call it climb or CLM again, climb. And we're gonna set the source to our left slider. And what we're gonna do is set up our curve to use CLM1 that we just created. We'll leave the weight as 100% and we're just okay. So back to the mix. And all we're gonna do is change the input to use our climb input. And that's it. We can now think about our maximum climb rate because that's the first parameter we need to tweak. I'm gonna set a starting value of 50. So we'll get a bit more throw. But what we want to do is tweak this value when we're in flight. For example, we put it in cruise, we put the slider all the way up for our maximum climb. If we find that 50 is too much, we'll obviously reduce this down to 40. Or if it's too little, we could put it up to 60. But we need to tune this value first before we tune the maximum descent rate. Because this is scaling the whole channel, so we need to get this right before we can adjust the endpoint for the descent. So just to show this working, we'll go into the simulator and you can see on channel two, we have our elevator. So down is nose up, which is a negative value. Up is nose down, which is a positive value. So if we slide our slider up for climb, 
we can see we're now adding a climb of 50%. And if we pull the slider down, we're having a descent of 25%, which is that 50 in the curve. What if you find that the slider is actually working the wrong way? On some of these transmitters, the slider like thumb part is at the front, some is at the back. You might want to reverse it, or you might just want it so the down is actually nose up. So to do that, it's quite simple. So I'll leave that at the top. So at this point, we're climbing up by 50%. Uh, so what we want to do is when we come back with that in the same position, we should be descending by 25%. So we'll close that for now and head into our inputs. And all we need to do is change this curve to the inverted version. So if we simulate it, our slider is all the way up and we can see our elevator is at 25%. So we've basically just reversed our slider. So to show that, I'll go down all the way to the bottom. You can see we're at climb of 50%. So that's all you need to do is just reverse that curve. Right, so the tuning part, as I sort of briefly mentioned, what we want to do is get up, get in cruise mode, and then what we're going to do is slowly put this slider up until we reach maximum. If you find that that climb angle is perfect, then don't change anything. But if you find you need to tweak it, we will need to adjust the weight in the mixer. So that's just this 50% here. Like I mentioned, if you're climbing too much, reduce it. If you're climbing too little, increase it. Once you've got that, what we will then do is do the opposite. So get some altitude and then slowly increase the slider into the dive side and see what the descent angle's like. If you find that you're descending too quickly, what you need to do is go into curves and reduce this 50% down, so say 40%. Or if you find that you could actually descend a little bit quicker if you wanted to, you could increase it to 60 and try again. It's just tweaking those two values to get this working perfectly. And that's all there is to it. So now let's get on to the more important part of this, which is making sure that we're in cruise mode. As I mentioned in the original video, if your transmitter is sending, say, three channels of modes data over, you have to use INAV to do it. There's no way around it. For this to work, our transmitter has to be just sending over one channel of modes. So INAV basically doesn't really have a choice unless it can't physically put it in because of a GPS problem. Yeah, something outside the scope of normal regular flight. What I've got here is the INAV Fixwing Group Pro model. And what we'll do is take a look at how these modes work. If you've been observant, you'll see right here, I have the switch layout for the INAV Fixwing Group Pro model. So you can see we're using multiple switches. So switch A has acro angle and cruise. Switch B has manual and waypoint missions. And switch D has position hold and return to home. Potentially what we could have, because there's an override system within this, we could have so that we're in cruise mode, but SB is potentially in manual or SD is in return to home and cruise mode will not be in use. So this switch will be in the right position, but these other switches are effectively canceling that out. So we can't just trust the switch position. So I can show you this better in the simulator. So there we go, channel six is our modes. So SA up is cruise mode. So that is 66%. Uh, angle is minus 33, acro is minus 100. So this is what we're, we're needing to check. But you can see what I mean, we're now in cruise mode. But if I put this into manual, it will change to manual. If I put this into return to home, it will change to return to home. So we can't just rely on these switch positions. Instead, what we're going to have to look at is um, either logic conditions that are already set up, or we can use this channel percentage here. 
So we need to remember that in this example, that's 66%. Now, if you're combining switches in a pure way, this will actually work, but I know for a fact that this will not work with the OpenTX model. But what we should be able to do is say, uh, if we're approximately at, choose our channel output for modes and say 66, this should work, but channel six is actually the output of the mixer, not the output of the channel. So it seems to be a bug in OpenTX. It's not really doing what it should be in my opinion. Um, and I can show you this, we're at 66% and it's not working. If you've seen my switch combination videos where we're combining switches as an input, this will work. But what I'm actually doing in this model is using special functions to output the values for the um, switch positions. So what we can do is we know that 66 is our cruise mode. So what we can do is just use logical switch 60. We know that when that's active, we're in cruise. So if you're overriding channels, you need to find out where your cruise mode is like this. But if you're using a combination of inputs to have multiple switches on one channel, you can do it with this channel mode. So if you're doing switch combinations, like I showed in one of my other OpenTX videos, which I'll put in the, the link description, this will work because that is still going through the mixer. So what we can do is forget about this for the OpenTX Pro model or anything else that uses these overrides. And we'll just take our 66% here that matches up with our simulated option. We're using logical switch 60. So now what we'll do, we'll go to our mixers and we'll do the same as we did before. We'll add a line uh, to our elevator. We'll call it climb. Again, you can set this up using the input method that I showed earlier in this video, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to set it up on the slider with a 50%. And what we're going to do is have this activated only when logical switch 60 is active. So now we know that our cruise uh, slider will only work when we're in cruise mode. And just to demo, what I'll do is I'll stick it in manual. Our slider has no effect whatsoever. Our elevator, of course, is on channel two. If I come out of manual, we're now in cruise mode. Our logical switch 60 is active and now our slider works. As I mentioned, that's just very basic. If you want to do all the uh, reversing and the unequal climb and descent, just go back to that section earlier in the video. You can still apply this too. This part is just for the switching. So I hope that has cleared up a few things with regards to getting this set up. As I did mention in the original video, and I just want to reiterate here, the making sure you're in cruise mode is the most important part of this. If you can't guarantee that, you really need to do it in iNav only. And if you're doing it with a different flight controller firmware, I just wouldn't even risk it. If, if you can't guarantee you're in that cruise mode. So for other flight controller platforms, what cruise mode is, is a self-leveling flight mode with altitude and heading lock. If you've got all those things, you can use this without a problem. Because it's self-leveling, it's not using a rate-based control for the pitch. So that, if we put that slider in, that 27% that I've just put there will just add 27% to the elevator and it will use it as an angle. That's why this mode is called angle in INAV because it is basically saying, I want that angle off of neutral. It's not continually adding a, a I want to rotate at this rate, which is what you know, Acro manual will do. So yeah, just make sure that you're in the right flight mode to use this guys. But you can have a lot of fun with this. And as I mentioned in the last video, you'll be up at 399 feet in no time, hands off. <laughs> so um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. But I hope this was a nice follow on just to clarify a few things for that video. So thank you very much for watching, guys. See you on the next one. Fly your models like you stole them. Have fun. Bye bye.